Good morning, everyone. Your morning weather briefing for this Monday, July 2nd finds that there are no major changes in the forecast versus what I presented yesterday, keeping in mind, of course, that the forecast uh, today is a lot cooler uh, for the July 6th through 8th time frame versus what I presented from back on Friday. That was a change uh, presented with yesterday's outlook. As far as the uh, 6 to 10 and the uh, 11 to 15 day temperature and rainfall outlooks are concerned, you can see the uh, cooler look to the 6 to 10 day time frame. That is when a lot of that July 6th through 8th period is included. Uh, most of the corn melt now looking at near normal uh, temperatures during that time frame, but still a fair amount of heat in the 1 to 5 and 6 and 11 to 15 day periods. Uh, still looking at a lot of blownable uh, rainfall for both the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day periods. Uh, there is good model agreement on that, but again, as usual, I do have my suspicions. That it may turn out to be wetter than what the models do suggest. QPF discussion for the one to five day time frame, no major uh, differences versus what is shown. Uh, a lot of the rainfall that is shown there uh, for the far northwestern and far western corn belt is going to be for tomorrow night uh, into Wednesday night. Uh, another area of decent rain is going to be found in the eastern and southeastern corn belt. Uh, some of that rain probably falling in that area on any day uh, during this uh, work week period. Also a situation where the heavy rain along the Gulf Coast, some of that rain is going to be falling at any day for today through Friday. Then for the day six to seven period, we are looking at a cooler and drier air mass uh, dominating the corn belt for the weekend period, meaning that most of the corn belt for the weekend period looking at completely dry weather. Afternoon high temperatures yesterday still did see a lot of heat in the eastern portion of the Corn Belt. High temperatures there uh, above 90 degrees, but a cooler uh, weather regime in western portion of the Corn Belt and into the Plain States with highs there just in the 70s and 80s. Uh, for your uh, Monday morning as far as temperatures are concerned as of 5 o'clock in the morning note that we do still see an extensive area of 70 plus degree uh, low temperatures as of 5 o'clock this morning in about the southeastern I'll say third or a little bit better than that of the Corn Belt a few pockets in Indiana posting uh, temperatures as of 5 o'clock this morning still above 75 degrees 18 hour rainfall totals a couple of areas of decent rains one in Minnesota and then another one in uh, southeastern portions or east central portion of Illinois both places there uh, seeing more than an inch. Uh, looking at rainfall totals for the past three days, uh, there you can see, excuse me for that, uh, there you can see the uh, big rains that have occurred during the last 24 hours in southeastern portions of uh, Illinois. Otherwise, the more extensive and bigger rains are falling across a good portion of the western and southwestern Corn Belt. Uh, some pockets of uh, very heavy rains occurred there. One is located right there uh, in the Des Moines area where there was extensive and very severe flash flooding in the Des Moines area uh, this past Saturday night. I know that at my own house I measured uh, seven and a half inches of rainfall in about a two to three hour time frame. Early morning radar on this Monday morning pretty quiet. Uh, most of the nation seeing nothing in the way of precipitation here early on this Monday. As far as the forecast is concerned, again it will be uh, tomorrow night and into Wednesday night, which we will be seeing uh, the most significant rainfall threat of the week in the uh, far western, far northwestern portion of the Corn Belt, and that will be as a cool front starts to move into that area. Should be some uh, fairly uh, significant rains, even locally heavy, uh, uh, with uh, most of that rain going to be falling in uh, the eastern Dakotas, Minnesota, extreme northwestern Iowa, and into uh, northwestern sections of uh, Wisconsin. Then as we head towards uh, the uh, uh, latter portion of this uh, week and into the weekend period, that is when we are going to be looking at uh, cooler and drier air mass uh, going to be dominating the middle of the country. There you can see uh, surface high pressure coming down from Canada as of 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. A uh, cool front has moved uh, well to the south of the Corn Belt. So uh, overall, a cool and dry air mass going to be seen for the weekend period that is going to be uh, keeping uh, most of the Corn Belt dry during that time frame. As far as your temperature forecast is concerned, it's still the situation for your Monday, which the heat is going to be in eastern portions of the region, while uh, western portions of the Corn Belt still looking at relatively mild conditions for today. Uh, heat is going to be returning to all of the region, though, for tomorrow through Thursday, looking at temperature anomalies uh, for the middle of that period on Wednesday. You can see that uh, temperatures at that time are running quite easily above normal across uh, not only the Corn Belt, for, but for a big portion of the nation to the east of the Plain States. Uh, then, as I said, though, a cooler and drier air mass is going to be coming down for the weekend period. I note that uh, still going to be having a dome of high pressure on the weather maps at that time, but of course uh, surface uh, temperatures are determined by surface features, and at the surface we are looking at uh, a fairly cool and fairly dry Canadian air mass at that time, so that is why we have seen the forecast uh, for uh, the 
July 6th through 8th time frame turned cooler once again uh, versus what it looked like from back on Friday's forecast. Uh, there you can see your temperature anomalies for Saturday. Extensive area of temperatures no worse than normal. Some pockets of uh, below normal readings for the Saturday time frame. And again, it would be the June, July 6th through 8th period when that cooler air mass is going to be seen. Looking at a dome watch for your Monday morning, you see that the dome of high pressure at the uh, time frame of the, this evening is going to be still uh, located over northeastern portion of the nation, but it is on its way uh, to the west, uh, going to be expanding and moving westward by the time we get to uh, late in the day on the 4th of July. Uh, then as we get towards uh, late in the day on July 6th, note that the dome of high pressure is still pretty expansive, but has moved even further west by that time. And as we get towards 7 o'clock in the evening on July 9th, you can see that the dome of high pressure has moved uh, really over a uh, southwestern portion of the nation in good agreement by all the models and basically from uh, that time frame forward is when uh, the model suggests that the dome of high pressure is basically going to be taking up its normal summertime position in the southwestern U.S. Uh, over the Four Corners region. You have some modest uh, variability east to west on the exact position of the dome for uh, July 9th and beyond. But again, basically those maps right there suggest where the dome of high pressure is going to be taking up residence uh, by around a week or so from this time and basically staying there for the remainder of the two-week time frame. Uh, obviously by that time temperatures would still be fairly warm. Still looking at above normal heights across uh, the bulk of the nation. Good model agreement on that. So nothing any, it's not any sort of a cool weather pattern. That is certainly the case. I would think that uh, temperatures will be returning to above normal levels by the time we get to around July 9th and that will continue for the rest of the two-week time frame. You can see though that with the dome of fire pressure located in the southwestern portion of the nation uh, we are looking at a northwesterly flow aloft uh, indicated by a lot of the models but especially the uh, European European Ensemble and the GFS Ensemble. Again emphasizing that the models themselves are not indicative of a lot of rainfall uh, for really a lot of the two-week time frame, but especially for the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day periods where there is good model agreement on below normal rainfall amounts. And again, that's where I put my forecast at this morning. I will admit that the models in general did a very good job of suggesting what this week's rainfall uh, anomaly map would look like. But that said, it is still a northwesterly flow aloft. And in the back of my mind, and I'm sure again, you are all getting tired of hearing about this, in the back of my mind, a northwesterly flow aloft in the summer time is one that oftentimes is a pattern that is underestimating its ability to rain in the Corn Belt. Do we see any signs of that as far as the actual weather maps are concerned? Well, you know, maybe nothing real definitive, but maybe looking at surface features as of 1 o'clock in the morning on July 11th, you can see that there is some sort of a possible disturbance, uh, kind of a uh, maybe a little bit of a rain system uh, in a northwesterly flow aloft moving southeastward through the Corn Belt. Obviously doesn't look like much on these weather maps, but maybe, just maybe as we get towards this time frame, it might turn out to be something a little Little bit more significant than the models would suggest. So as far as my forecast is concerned, strictly I am looking at below rainfall for the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day time frames. That is due to the fact that there is good model agreement on that and the fact that the models did a very good job of predicting the type of rainfall pattern for this week, but still in the back of my mind with a northwesterly flow aloft, I still wonder if the pattern eventually will turn out to be wetter than the models do suggest. Internationally for this morning, wanted to first of all mention that there was extensive rainfall over the weekend in a lot of the summer uh, row crop areas of uh, far western Ukraine. A note that several places there in Ukraine had more than three inches of rainfall over the weekend. Several other places uh, seeing one to two inch rainfall amounts and some of that rainfall even got into uh, western portions of central region. Uh, some of those eastern growing areas will remain dry and overall the forecast is not hopeful for rainfall in those uh, eastern summer row crop areas. Of the former Soviet Union still looking at strictly below normal rainfall there for the next two weeks. Most of that area seeing under a half inch of rainfall, some places next to nothing uh, for at least the next 10 days. Forecast is still not overly wet in most of Europe. A lot of the rainfall that is seen there in central and southern portion of France is going to be seen during this one to five day time frame. Otherwise, it is a very dry two week forecast for all of Europe.
For the spring grain areas of the former Soviet Union, one of the drier forecasts that we have seen in quite some time for that area, but at least some rain will continue to fall in that area at times during the next 10 days. Rainfall forecast for the corn and soybean areas of China, looking at near to below normal rainfall uh, for the Manchurian corn and soybean areas, but should still be easily enough rainfall to keep favorable conditions ongoing there. Uh, then looking at normal to above normal rainfall for the North China Plain. In fact, a southern portion of the North China Plain, probably heavy amounts of rainfall for the duration of the two-week time frame. For the Canadian prairies, the best rains in the Canadian prairies are going to be favoring a northern portion of that growing area during the next 10 days versus the south. In Australia, still looking at some nice rains, especially for today and tomorrow. In a lot of the uh, wheat area of uh, western Australia, that area will then return to dry conditions as we get towards Wednesday. It will have dry weather for the rest of the 10-day forecast. A note that in eastern growing areas, not a lot of rainfall on their 10-day forecast. Most of the rain that is seen going to be falling in Victoria. That would be mainly for late this week. Uh, eastern growing areas of Australia would then be seeing below normal rainfall for the 11 to 15 day time frame. Finishing up for this morning, not a great monsoon in India for the next two weeks, but certainly better than nothing. Uh, certainly the best rain is going to be falling in the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day time frames for central portions of the Indian subcontinent. That's what I have for your Monday. Everyone have themselves a great day.